I want to bring in now former acting deputy secretary of Homeland Security, Ken Cuccinelli, who is on the line. Ken, thank you for being with us on this Good Friday afternoon in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, this is a tragic event that we have seen unfold. Your thoughts on it this afternoon? Well, I, I am glad to be with you, but somber at the cost. Um, you know, uh, you quoted Dan Bongino, and he, uh, I say that quite a bit, as there's no one else other than law enforcement officers who we ask to get up every morning and put themselves in between us and evil every day. And um, that's a very dangerous place to be, as we saw again today. Um, you know, my heart goes out to the family of the fallen officer uh, and the injured officer. Um, but certainly um, you have someone who appears to have been acting alone, as the acting chief said, and um, the officers responded. The other officers responded what appears to be at first blush quite correctly. If someone exits a vehicle with a knife aggressively, uh, that is an immediate deadly force situation. And that's exactly what was used. Yeah, uh, it appears in this case his weapon was his car uh, and also a knife that is described as a fairly large knife uh, between a kitchen knife and a machete was the way that that was described. Um, Ken, you know, they need to start piecing together who this individual is uh, right. or was, I should say, and, and what his motivation was at this point. You know, what, what has to go into that mix? Because um, obviously we want to keep the homeland safe, the capital safe, the country safe, and uh, we need to see whether there were any signals that were coming out yeah. from this individual. No, that's right. And so this person will be traced backwards in time, um, you know, name, cell phone, and so forth. And with the cell phone, as long as it's on, they can obtain cell tower information from whoever this person's provider is and, and trace them backwards. Uh, it does look like the kind of behavior I would expect to see out of a sort of a soul lone, angry, perhaps mentally ill actor. Um, this does not look like part of any sort of a, a plan that you'd expect to be uh, perpetrated this way. Certainly, if it had been, I think we'd have seen other actions by now. So, uh, so it really is a question at this point for the investigators and the Capitol Police and others who will join them undoubtedly to trace this person backward to try to identify if there is anything um, that was uh, observable before that we might prevent in the future. Uh, that's the goal at this point. Obviously, there isn't going to be a trial because this person has been been killed as part of this incident. Obviously, this is such a different situation, at least it appears based on what we know now, and that could change than what we saw on January 6th in terms of, of who was involved sure. and the motivation and all of that. But we do know that over the past couple of weeks, some of those barricades have come down. I think most people were very happy to see some of that barbed wire removed from around our nation's capital. Um, but no doubt this will reignite the conversation about how much protection, how much security is needed around this complex. So that's an interesting point. Um, so let's look at what happened here. This was a vehicle barrier that has been there probably for decades. Um, this was part of the standard security protocols that were in existence, have been in existence for years and years and years. And with the respect to the vehicle, they work. The positioning of the officers is something we're going to, you know, do a do a retrospective review of. And I'm sure the Capitol Police will as well. But these this incident doesn't by itself suggest that the other security measures you mentioned the national guard we've seen those in the video footage from your correspondent there um would have had any effect um or any relevance in this particular situation this is something they have been prepared for for years and years and years and it isn't the first time someone has hit these barricades uh but it is the first time i can remember when a Capitol Police officer was killed or, or injured at the same time as one of those incidents. Yeah, uh, we saw the shooting back in, I think it was 1998, a shootout uh, at Capitol Hill. And then, of course, um, the uh, incidents that uh, took the life of Brian Sicknick, Officer Brian Sicknick, on January the 6th. Um, Ken Cuccinelli, we thank you very much, uh, former Homeland Security. Good to, good to have you with us today, sir. Um, good to be with you. Good Friday.